Greetings. I am making this video for a Chem 244 student who has given up on figuring out theoretical yield and percent yield. We cannot have this. It's an important part of lab life. So without further ado, let's do a problem. I took a problem. Okay, I'm trying to share my screen. Here we go. I took a problem from a Chem 131. I hope we're seeing that right now. And uh, it's a combustion problem. It's got a little more involved than what we really need to get to. Really, we only want to know the percent yield for the reaction above. Um, I'm assuming you know how to get to formula weights from formulas. So I'm just going to dispense with doing that. And here it is. Oops, that's not how I want to get rid of my my uh, reduction here. There we go. There's your formula weights you're going to need. Uh, why do I not have water in here is a good question. Very good question because combustion reactions make water. Once again, you will not have to balance a combustion reaction on any Chem 243 or 244 uh, question on any exam ever. We're just getting to the point where we have a balanced combustion reaction and this would be given to you on your exam. And I have trouble getting rid of my redactions here. There we go. So everything here you would be given, formula weights either given or you can look them up or calculate them. So it's just, I, 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 please tell me I haven't lost anybody yet. So we're here with this problem where we're given gram amounts. Gram amounts are useless in chemistry. Milliliter amounts are useless in chemistry. You must have moles. So I'm gonna verbally say the steps. The steps are always the same. Uh, maybe my computer can tell me what these steps are and type them for me, but computers don't like the way I speak like many of my students, but here we go. One, and we got a microphone here. And I'll read slowly and carefully. Go to moles for each reactant. Goals and Maurice, 43 cents. It did a perfect job. Okay, this ends the humor portion of today's video. Oh, wow. I better stop talking, apparently. <laughs> uh, we're having a little too much fun now. Get me out of here. Thank you. I don't want to start this video over. There we go. Here are your steps. It's been a long semester. What can I say? One. That's a big one, isn't it? Go. That's a pretty big go. Go to moles for each reactant. This is any chemical reaction ever. Two, for each reactant, and usually we deal with two, but it could be 10, doesn't matter. Do it for each one. For each reactant, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna invent a new verb for you and explain it later. Stoiky it to moles of product. Whenever the word stoichiometry comes up, there's only one other word that should come to your mind. Coefficients. This is the only time you use the coefficients. That's these red numbers and the invisible number one here. The only time you use these coefficients is for going from moles of one substance to moles of another. Do not ever use coefficients for anything else. That would be a fool's mission. Three, the theoretical yield in moles, you've already calculated it.
is the smaller of the two numbers. in step two, because when you've made that amount theoretically, that reactant that made that amount has run out. You cannot make any more. Four, convert theoretical yields from moles to grams using the formula weight of the product. Convert, I'm gonna short form it, moles to theoretical yield grams doesn't look so good i'm gonna make it look better i know it's aren't pretty but we want it to be readable or legible as we say grams using formula weight of product no other formula weight is relevant now because you converted to moles of product in step one and two using formula weight of product. This gets a lot of, I've seen students using the molecular weight of one of the reactants here so many times that I gotta say it one more time, using the formula weight of the product. We're producing a product. We're actually making a product. The percent yield is how much you actually made actual yield in grams over theoretical yield, which you just calculated in grams times 100. And I'd just like to point out, you could have done percent yield equals actual yield in moles, skip step four, did a new step four and converted the, the uh, actual yield given in the question, 41.4 grams of CO2 is produced is the actual yield. You could have converted that to moles and used moles over moles down here. As long as they're both for the product, you're gonna get the same answer. They have it in a nutshell. We'll go on the next page and do every step. I've worked them out ahead of time. And here we go. Step one was to go to moles for each reactant. And then for each reactant, I'm going to stoichy it. That is just my way of saying, use the coefficients to go from moles of reactant to moles of product. You'll see, stoichy it. This means use the coefficient. Hopefully it catches on. So we see other students using it. It's a nice catchy little expression. So I'm gonna combine steps one and two together. You are very savvy students. I don't think I'm gonna lose you doing this. Step one, I'm gonna take 48.0 grams of seed. Uh, uh, let's keep our color scheme. Uh, we had blue for the fuel, green for O2 and red for CO2. Blue for the fuel, uh, 48 grams of fuel. And that was C8H18, uh, 16, sorry, times. I got to get it to moles. That's where formula weights used. Something that gets rid of grams gives me moles. We did the preliminary work. There's one mole of C8H16 for every 112.2. This was on our previous page. Okay, that is step one. In a nutshell, we've done step one. Let's do light pink labeling. Step one. Step two, we're gonna stoichy it. I'm gonna get rid of red because I'm using red for stoichiometry. I'm gonna make it blue, 48 grams. Sorry, these things never go as smooth as they should. I'm gonna use coefficients in red always. You make from the balanced chemical equation, eight moles of CO2. Here's what I mean by stoiking it. We're making CO2. That's the only product of interest. 
for every one mole of C8H8, uh, I keep saying that, H16. We're gonna get an answer. The answer, I hope we can get on the, the one line. This is step two. When you multiply that by the coefficients, we're stoiking it. And I got 3.422 moles of CO2. Four, two, two. Always good to remind yourself what chemical you're at. Write down what the chemical is. So that's one of the reactants. The other reactant is O2. We used 59.0 grams of O2. Some of you are instinctually thinking O2 must be the major product. Uh, sorry, the excess reactant. You are wrong. We're going to prove it. It has to be moles before you make any conclusions, and you have to stoichy it. So we got one mole of O2 for every 32.00 gram. Now we're going to stoichy it. You make eight moles of CO2 in the balanced chemical equation. For every 12 moles of O2, you reacted in the balanced equation. This comes out to a smaller number. This number is very important. That is three. That is the theoretical yield. That is in mole. So step three, uh, that is three. Step four is to convert that number of moles. Step four, convert 1.229 moles CO2 into grams of CO2. Grams and moles will cancel. One mole, 44.01 grams. That's the molecular weight of the product. CO2. And here I got 54.10. This is also your theoretical yield. Don't put the decimal early. 54.10 grams. That is the theoretical yield in grams. The reminder, theoretical yield CO2. And in the problem, it states you made 41.4 grams. Five, ratio of how much you actually made over how much you could have made. 54.10 grams represents the most CO2 that you could have made under these conditions. So 41.4 is the actual over the theoretical, 54.10. These are grams, they're gonna cancel. That's good because percents don't have units. And you're gonna get 76.5%. And that's the end of this video. And I hope that student doesn't give up on doing theoretical and percent yield on their final. I hope we got them their five points or whatever it's gonna be. Take care. I'll see some of you shortly for 242 review. Bye. Bye.